In this presentation, we're going to enter a reversing entry related to accounts receivable or related to an invoice or income. In other words, we entered an adjusting entry in a prior presentation in order to pull in the income and the related accounts receivable related to an invoice that was issued after the cutoff date, but for which the work was actually done before the cutoff date. Now we're going to enter a reversing entry as of the day after the cutoff date in our period or in our presentation that being March 1st. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars dashboard. We're gonna start off opening up our financial statements, that being the balance sheet and the income statement, accounting drop down, then go on down to the balance sheet. We're gonna duplicate that tab by going up to the tab up top, right the clicking on that tab, and then we will duplicate it. We'll go back to the tab to the left. We're going to do the same process for the income statement, selecting the accounting drop down. We're going to go on down to the income statement. Once that then opens up, we're going to do the same thing with the duplication by right clicking on the tab up top and duplicating it. Then we're going to go back to the balance sheet and we're going to be adjusting the date, picking the date for the cutoff date, that being uh, the end of uh, let's pick the end of February. That's going to be our cutoff date and update that. And so let's tell a story of what has happened so far. For that, we're going to go into our flowchart. So this is a flowchart on QuickBooks Desktop just to get an idea of what we have done in the past. So you'll recall we had an, an invoice. The invoice had been entered in March. However, we need to, needed to pull it back into February because that's the period in which the work was actually done. For me, the easiest way to think about this is if you're an accounting firm or a law firm, and in our case, if you have guitar lessons and you have employees that have to give you a timesheet and you gotta take that timesheet, put it together, and then have a billable rate on it, it's quite possible then that the invoice went out at a month after the time period in which the work was actually done. Here, however, we wanna deal with inventory. We dealt with inventory, and when the work is done with inventory is typically when the inventory is shipped. We want to deal with inventory because it's a bit more complicated of a journal entry as well. So we're saying the, the inventory journal entry, the invoice related to inventory, went out uh, in March, even though the actual shipment happened in February. Therefore, we need to bring it back into February, which we did by entering a journal entry. And the journal entry looked something like this. So we entered this adjusting journal entry as of February. Now, the problem with that, of course, is now as of the date that the actual invoice went out, the adjusting entry is in the, it's going to be in there twice now as of march so what we're going to do is reverse this as of march 1st and then when we get up to the date of the actual invoice we will be okay we won't have it will we'll be everything will be as we want it everything will be we'll have everything in there as of the cutoff date and then it'll it'll be reversed uh, after the next date so it won't be double input so that's going to be our objective here to do this, we're going to go to the first tab. We're going to do an, an adjusting entry. So we're going to go to the accounting drop down. We're going to go on down. To, well, this will be a reversing entry. We're going to go down to the reports. So we're looking for our uh, general journals, the journal entry screen. We're going to go on down and we're looking for the general report, general report. And then we're going to go into this item, which says add the new journal. So we're going to add a new journal. And so then I'm going to say that this is a reversing entry and all reversing entries happen as of March. So we're going to say this is going to be in March 1st. So we'll say March 1st. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up just a bit, get up to that 125. Now the adjusting entry looked something like this. For the reversing entry, you want to take the adjusting entry and I would just reverse it exactly. In other words, uh, you might be tempted to try to put the debits on top and the credits on the bottom. I wouldn't, you know, I would just do exactly the same ordering of the accounts and then just reverse the debits and credits. That's the easiest for me to see it. So what I would do is I would just basically, we're going to copy this thing and say, now we're going to have a reversing entry and make this a little bit long, longer. And I'm just going to take the opposite, right? I'll just take the opposite of what happened here. So this is going to be, I'm going to say this is a credit of that amount. This is a debit of that amount. This is a debit of that amount. This is a credit of that amount. And a debit of that amount. And if you ever have to think about a reversing entry or you know a credit memo type of entry, this is what you want to do. You don't want to try to think of the credit memo, you know, or the you know the reversing entry. You just make it out of your head. That's too difficult because everything's backwards. It's gonna everything's gonna feel funny. So what you want to do is do the actual adjusting entry. The normal entry for an invoice 
and then reverse it. Then think about how, how you just you know do the opposite. And I wouldn't start to reorder the accounts, put debits on top. Once you have this done, then you can reorder the accounts if you want to, to put the debits on top. But I would reverse it in this format. This would be the easiest way to do it. But then I'm gonna hide these so I don't kind of get myself messed up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna select those columns and hide them. And this is gonna be our reversing entry. All right, so let's do that. And the description should pop up on its own. This is gonna be accounts receivable. Now note, we had to put it into that adjusting account for accounts receivable, that's fine. So we're just gonna reverse that one out entirely. It'll disappear in March, because it'll be back down to zero. And that's gonna be for, we needed to credit it for the 547.5. So we're gonna put the 547.50. Then, we have the sales, so and this should be the merchandise. It actually should be merchandise, because uh, that's the sales item we wanted, the merchandise sales. I'm pretty sure that's the right account, I hope. Let's, let's check it. I don't want to mess up. I kind of messed up last time, and I don't want to mess up this time. So here it is, merchandise. That's the right one. All right, so that's going to be for the 500. 500. And then the difference is going to go to the sales tax. Pay, uh, payable account that's right and that's going to be for the 4750 and so that takes care of these first three and then we got the cost of goods sold so a reversing entry for a cost of goods sold cost of goods sold and that's going to be for the credit of 400 so we'll credit 400 there and then why isn't it giving me that reversing entry anymore down here this is all still reversing entries reversing oh, there it goes there it goes okay and then the other side is going to be going to inventory and again we had to use that inventory adjusting account because they wouldn't let us post the inventory itself because we have to support that by actual inventory which is fine that worked out fine so this should uh, reverse everything that we put in there as of march so let's go ahead and post that and see if well let's check it one more time so did i do this right sales tax and yeah i think that's okay i think it's okay so let's go ahead and post it kind of second guessing myself but i'm pretty sure that it's done well so then we're going to go back to the balance sheet and let's take a look at this as of the first day of the next time period let's bring it up to march let's go all the way to march uh, 30th and update that report and then if we if we go down to the accounts receivable, you'll notice the accounts receivable, that adjusting accounts receivable is gone because we reversed it and it's now gone back down to zero and we only have the accounts receivable here and that should net out to where it should be at this point in time. The timing difference is now over uh, as of this point in time. And the same is gonna be true with the inventory. So the inventory had an adjusting inventory account. That account is reversed out. The inventory should be good now. It should tie out to the inventory uh, sub, sub ledgers that are that'll track the in physical inventory and then the same is going to be true with the sales tax uh, account here we can actually see the sales tax account because we didn't have to we didn't have to include like another account to, to batch those out so let's see what happens with the sales tax account on the balance sheet and we're going to scroll down we had then the adjusting entry to bring it back so we brought it back increasing the sales tax for the cutoff period for our financial statements at the end of february then we reversed it in march and notice that means that you know we're kind of wrong between these two periods between march and and march 10th we're not on a perfect accrual basis right we're on a perfect accrual basis or as close to it as we can as of the cutoff date then we should have you could say well why didn't you reverse it as of march 10th because that's when the, the next thing happened and you can net them out exactly that way because we don't want to do that right we only care about being perfectly on an accrual basis as of the cutoff date and i want all the adjusting entries as of the cutoff date and i want all the reversing entries as of the first day of the next month so that we know where they are otherwise it's going to be a mess so you could put it there as of the, the 47th uh, as of the 10th and that'll reverse the exact day but it'll be harder to find those reversing entries. So we're gonna say, yeah, it's gonna be off. It's not gonna be a perfect accrual system from March 1st to March 10th, but that's just the way the system works. We're gonna, we're gonna be on a perfect accrual or as close to accrual process as of the cutoff dates at the end of the month. And it's not gonna be perfect in the middle. What's gonna happen there is we're gonna do the best we can from an accounting logistical type of standpoint. 
So that's going to be on, on the balance sheet side of things. If I go back up top and take a look at the income statement, then we'll have a similar kind of scenario. So notice this is going for the whole year. So let's go down what accounts will be affected. The merchandise, if we go into the merchandise, uh, we'll see a similar kind of scenario with the merchandise sales. This is going to be our sales line. And we have the adjusting entry, uh, increasing the sales. So we're, we pulled the invoice back into where it should with, a, with an entry. Then we reversed it as of the first day of the next month. So we took it back out so that when the actual invoice that was processed, which happened on the 10th, goes into play, it will not be in there twice because these two reversed each other out. Same kind of thing. You might have a question and say, well, why didn't you put the reversing entry as of the 10th? Because we're not really on a, it doesn't really fit between these two. We're going to be off between these two, these two time periods, between March 1st and March 10th. It's not recorded and on an accrual basis it should be. Why not just enter this as of the 10th? Again, we want all of the entries as of the first day of the next uh, time period. So all the reversing entries are on the same day. And we, we're not really concerned with being completely on an accrual basis at every point in, in, in the time period. We can't because it's, it's too difficult. So we're, gonna, we're recognizing that and say, hey, look, it's not perfect accrual basis or perfectly generally accepted accounting principles as of the mid date. We're planning that into the system and this makes it easier for us to, to do the logistical purposes and then be on a perfect accrual as of when we need it, the end of the month and or end of the year. So then the same thing's going to happen, of course, on the cost of goods sold side of things. So if we go on down to the cost of goods sold, we'll see a similar type of pattern, hopefully. hopefully I'm hoping to see a similar pattern. That's what I would expect to see. So if we go on down to this one, then we'll, we'll see then that we have this on the books for February. So there's the February, it's increasing, then we reversed it. And then the actual invoice happened in, in March 1st. So it's good as of the cutoff date, February 29th. We reversed it first day of the next time period to put it to put the accounting department back onto their system to, to do their process. Because processing the invoices is fine. It, it's, it's fine that there's a lag in the processing of the invoice. It's just that there's a timing difference from a perfect accrual basis. So then we'll reverse this and say, hey, you guys, are, you're back on your, your process. And then you just record the invoice whenever it works best for the normal accounting process. So that's going to be that. That's probably one of the pretty much the most confusing kind of uh, uh, adjusting and reversing journal entries. They are related to that invoice just because there's so many accounts that are involved with that accounts receivable. So that's it for now. Let's get out of here.